So who wants to take it away? I can start us off since I... Awesome. Okay, so this more er, <laughs> I, I apologize. It's very early morning for me, so I have to sort of get into the, <laughs> the sun. This evening, for most of you, we are going to go through the basics of setting up Polaris, and we're going to do this in four sections. So for those of you who attended our first webinar, it's going to be a little bit more similar to that. We're all four going to sort of divide the presentation. So Thomas is going to start us off with basic setup. Um, I will cover email, both um, regular email, POP3 and IMAP, and Exchange. Um, Mike is going to cover setting up your Google account and downloading from the Play Store. And Earl's going to do a couple of things that you're probably going to try and do right away, Google search and play videos, etc. So um, that's sort of the, the schedule. Um, we will take questions at the end. So if you do have questions, even though we have um, sort of a different, I don't know, how do you want to do this, Thomas? Shall we take questions between the presentations or wait till it's all over? Um, uh, up to you guys. I think uh, we could probably... If I have an opinion, I would like to wait until after people if people could just make note of their questions and then save it for a q a session at the end that usually works the best okay. yeah it probably will go smoother if we do that so it's, i'm fine either way so i'm okay with that so that's what we will do we will do the four presentations then we will take questions so absolutely write your question down so that you remember it at the end and we will take all of those then so thomas will get us started excellent how's everybody doing i, I hope you guys are doing well um I am going to stop sharing my screen here and we're going to move over to the Braille Sense Polaris Quick Start Guide. Um, so for those of you um, that are watching as we're going along, um, what I'm doing here, I'm actually doing a live stream uh, with a tripod and a camera uh, because what happens when you're doing the Quick Start Guide is it resets your Polaris. So I've actually reset my Polaris and when you run through the Quick Start Guide, it's going to be the same as when you first turn it on. Um, and this Quick Start Guide is great. It gives you a quick rundown of how everything works. So um, what we see here is the introduction page. So basically it says, welcome to the Braille Sense Polaris Getting Started Guide. Uh, one of the big things here is that you can press space with the letter E uh, to exit. Um, and space with E, uh, or, uh, and you can press the enter key, uh, which is to the right of dot six to go ahead and move on to the next step. Um, and like it says on there, you could activate the quick start guide at any time from the settings menu. <clears throat> so the, somebody says, can I refocus my camera, please? I can give it my best, but it's a little bit difficult to do. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just press enter. And oh, so should be speaking with, to me here. Let me just go ahead and I believe I had voice turned off. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Oh. So actually my voice is turned off right now. <laughs> I apologize. Let's see. Actually, just, two. Uh, yeah, it's not allowing me to. Oh. So let's just go ahead and turn the voice on. Voice on. File oh, manager. Now. File manager. F. So I'm actually going to show you guys how to start this off from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the file manager. I'm going to press S to go into settings. Set time and day. T. And then I can press Q to get to the quick start guide. And this is going to take a second because it is going to reboot my machine. Would you like to reboot your system and launch the quick start guide? Yes, prompt button. Yes, prompt button. I'm going to press enter. System. All right, and it's going to take a second here. Um, while we're waiting for it to take a second, uh, Jenny or uh, Earl or Mike, do you guys want to to kick in anything? I'm not sure if you already said this. I'm sorry, I was I was doing something. <laughs> um, but this actually, I just wanted to note that this actually comes up whenever you get a new Polaris. 
you will actually see this. The first time that you boot the Polaris, this quick guide will come up, which is why we're doing this. The other time that it happens is if you upgrade and the options are reset, you will um, also see it. But of course you can exit as he was already explaining, so you don't have to go through it every time. Um, but when you first get your Polaris, this is a really nice guided way to get you set up through um, all the, the basic settings that you're gonna wanna set. And I'll also just add, Ginny, um, I think what happened, can you guys hear me there? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I think what happened there is because um, when Earl or uh, Thomas was trying to do backspace F2, which is the command that we use to turn his speech back on, because he was in the user guide and you know, not completely Welcome up to the and running, Polaris getting started guide. This that command did not work, so he had to go into options and physically right. turn his voice you're on. Not, you're yeah. not supposed to know that command yet. Right. But he, doesn't, right. he didn't know what to do. <laughs> I'm going to mute. All right. So uh, I have rebooted my Polaris uh, pretty quickly. It was nice. Um, and so as you can tell, it reads to you. So uh, as you're moving through the Quick Start Guide, uh, you can press space with E to exit. Um, if you press the space bar, it will pull up the help menu. Uh, I'm sorry, the help um, application. Um, but what I want to do, I just want to press enter to move on to the next page. So I'm just going to press enter now. Physical orientation. To get a description of all the keys and buttons, as well as a list of tasks you can perform on the Braille Sense Polar. So when I pressed enter, it moved on to the next page and it started reading right away. Um, one of the things that uh, I find very useful to know uh, is when you press the enter and the backspace key together, it will stop reading. Um, that is a great, great key to know, key stroke to know. So um, in here, it says you can press space to open and read the uh, user manual now. If I wanted to press space, I could go ahead and do that. Uh, if it allows me to. All right. Common hot keys. Display here is a list of common hot keys. Okay. So um, I pressed space bar, but it didn't open up uh, for some reason. So I pressed enter. Now we're onto a list of the common hotkeys. Um, for those of you that could see the screen, as blurry as it may be, you'll notice that the, key, or the uh, text is highlighted as it speaks to you. And down here at the very bottom, you'll actually see the sim braille. So uh, if I don't want to listen to it, I can actually just press the backspace and enter key. Uh, and let's say I want to just read it in braille. I'm going to use the scroll keys to the left or to the right of my braille display uh, to go ahead and just pan through the, the braille. The main menu, press space one. So I could press space with dot one to move through the, uh, move through the text. And space four to move through. And the, uh, if I press space with dot four, it'll move me back up. The main menu. Press and space it'll speak one. to me. If I press the scroll keys, of course, it's just going to move the braille, but it's not going to speak to me. Okay. Now these are some great hotkeys. Um, one of the things about the Quick Start Guide is it does have all of these in here, um, but you're also going to be able to find this information in the Help uh, application on on board on the Polaris. Uh, so it's going to have a list of all of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter to move to the next page. Using Android apps. When using Android apps, okay. navigation is slightly different than when using Braille Sense apps. All right. The Polaris screen reader allows you to locate icon. Oh, stop. So I pressed uh, backspace and enter again to make it stop. So in this page, it's talking about using Android apps. And the basic premise is that you're going to want to use F3, the F3 key on your Polaris, to navigate by item. And you want to press space with F3 to move back an item. Um, so it's kind of like pressing tab or pressing shift tab. Uh, you can still use space with dots one, two, three, and space with dots four, five, six to jump to the top and bottom respectively. And then if you want to go back a screen, you're gonna be able to press F4 uh, or space with E. That's kind of like hitting the, uh, the escape button. Um, it also talks about typing in edit boxes. You want to press enter to activate the edit mode before you can enter the text. Um, and that's really great because it allows you to continue to use first letter navigation inside of Android apps. Uh, just in case you get to an edit box, um, you don't, you are accidentally typing into that edit box um, without pressing enter first. 
So I'm going to go ahead and press the enter key to move on. Setting the time. Okay. For items like social networking, the calendar. So the next screen that we're on is talking about setting the time. So from here, you want to pay particular attention to what's going on if you're going through the quick start guide. The reason is that as soon as we're done with this page, we're actually going to set the time. So from here, I read that I can use space with dot one and space with dot four to move back and forward by an hour, space with dots two and five to move by 10 minute increments, and space with three and six to move back and forward by one minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter here. Time, 02, 13 p.m. Edit combo box. Now, my player says that it's 2.13, and that is correct. But in this particular instance, let's say that I actually want to change the time. So I could go ahead and press space with dot four. 03.13 p.m. Edit combo box. And let's say it's 3.13. Well, it's actually 5.15 in Austin. 04.13.05.13 no, uh, p.m. Edit combo box. 4.15. 4.15, yeah. 4 0, 4, 13 p.m. So I press space box. with dot uh, one to change the hour. Now I'm going to go ahead and let's see, it's uh, 4.14. So I'm going to press space with dot six. 0, 4, 14 p.m. Edit combo box. So now it's set to 4.14. I really don't want it set to 4.14. I want it set to uh, to 2.14 because that's where I'm at now. 0, 3, 14 p.m. Edit combo box. So space with dot one. 0, 2, 14 p.m. Edit combo box. And that's right. So I'm going to just go ahead and press enter now. Uh, I can also type it in uh, just using um, the hours and then minutes with the space in between. So I could type in 02 space 14 to set my time. Setting the date. As with the time setting, it is a. All right. So now that I've got the time set, I want to set the date. Um, from here, I can go ahead and just press enter. Date, Wednesday, April 15th, 2020, at a combo box. And it's just like with the time. If I press space with dot one. Sunday, March 15th, 2020, added combo box. Or space with dot four. Wednesday, April 15th, 2020, added combo box. There you go. It's moving me by month. If I press space with dot five. Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, 17 weeks, added combo box. It's moving me by week, and I'll go back. Wednesday, April 15th, 2020, 16 weeks, added combo box. Now, if I wanted to do by day, I could use either dots three or dot six. Tuesday, April 14th, 2000, Wednesday, April 15th, 2020, added combo box. So the level of granularity increases the further away from the center of the device you go. So it's Wednesday, April 15th. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Customizing your unit. The Braille Sense Polaris Global Options. All right. So the next page talks about customizing your unit, uh, utilizing global options. Uh, when you're using a player, you're going to run into this a lot. You want to press space with the letter O to open your global options. And then you're going to be able to navigate that using space with dot one and space with dot four to move up and down the list, uh, respectively. Uh, when you get to an item, you can use space and backspace to adjust the value. Uh, and then whenever you press enter, it's going to save your changes. If you want to make multiple changes, uh, it's important to note when you're using global options, change everything all at once and then press enter. It will save every change that you've made. You don't need to press enter after each individual setting change. Just make all of your changes and then press enter when you're done with all of them, uh, and that will save everything. Now, you can also get out of the global options by pressing F4. That'll just cancel. Um, so let's go ahead and press enter to skip this step. You're done. And now I'm done. Congratulations. Your Braille Sense Polaris is now ready. So I'll press backspace and enter because uh, I don't want to have to read this whole page. So it says I'm done. Um, if you're using a password function, uh, you know, make sure that you're writing it down. Um, that's one of the key things on this page. Uh, you do not want to forget your password. Um, but the rest of it, you guys could read on your own. I'm going to press enter again. Are you sure you want to exit the quick start guide and go to the program menu? Yes, prompt button. Do I want to exit the quick start guide and go back? Yes, I do. Uh, so it says yes, prompt button. So I just press enter. Exit the quick start guide. File manager, F. And now I'm into the main menu. All right. So that covers the quick start guide. Uh, I know we went through it a little bit fast, but uh, just so you guys know, we are recording this video. Uh, so if you have questions, or you want to go through it again, uh, that video will be made available to you guys pretty shortly.
Did you want to set up Wi-Fi real fast? Sure, I can set up Wi-Fi real quick. So um, there's a few different ways of setting up Wi-Fi and it really depends on how you're going to go about doing this. Um, actually, let me go ahead. I'm going to actually join the Zoom meeting so I'm not doing a live stream from a camera. Um, this is a good and very appropriate topic. Uh, I've already got Zoom installed on my Polaris. I'm just going to go ahead and press the letter A. Calendar. That opens up all apps. I'm going to go ahead and press the letter Z here. Zoom. Takes me to Zoom. Zoom. All right, now I've got hey, Zoom up and I'm going to hit J to go to the Join button. List Join. Button Enter key to select. Press Enter here. Zoom. Edit box, disable meeting ID, press enter to enter or edit text. Now, you'll remember that in the quick start guide, I said you had to press enter to edit text. So I'm going to press enter here. And uh, what you may notice on, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. There we go. So uh, I'm in the join a meeting section here. Uh, I press enter to edit the, or to be able to edit the edit box. Um, one second. And I forgot the meeting ID here. I think I have it written down. Uh, all right. Let's see real quick. Uh, Earl, do you remember the meeting ID for this? I don't remember the meeting ID. All right, hold on. I'll look it up real quick. I thought I had it written down. If you've got the link to it, it's after the backslashes, those numbers after the backslash. That's your meeting ID. I will just invite myself here. <clears throat> All right. Somebody was kind enough to text it to me. Thank nice. you. I was going to say, Thomas, I have it if you need it, but you have it now? Number I think nine. I do. Okay, good. So what is it? Nine. Nine. Four. Eight. Four, eight. What is that? Seven, six, nine. Seven, six, nine. Uh, three, eight. Three, eight. What is that? Six, six. Eight, eight. Eight, eight. All right. Button reset me. Button join with a personal link name. Press the enter key to run. Okay. Edit box disabled 948. Button reset meeting ID. Button join with button join meeting. Press the enter key to run. Connecting. All right. Audio enter key to select. All right. So let's go ahead and stop this. And. Current view is share. Du current view is share. Double tap to hide toolbar. Start my video. Share. Start share. Start share. Button OK. Press the end. Share. Button it. Button screen. Enter key to select. Zoom. All right. There we go. So now I should be sharing my screen here with everybody. Uh, and everybody should be able to see it. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for giving me the meeting ID. All right. So now I've got Zoom. File manager. Here. F. Um, you want to set up the internet. Uh, you can get to it in a couple different ways. Uh, I'm gonna, I could scroll down to settings so I know that uh, set up internet is in settings. I could press space with dot four to move down the menu. Word processor, notepad, N. Um, I could also press the letter S uh, to open up settings. I'm gonna just go ahead and press S now. Set time and day, T. And you'll notice when I press the letter S that it just took me directly into the settings. Um, I actually want to go to set up internet, so I'm going to press space with dot four to move down. Set up internet, I. I'm going to press enter. L wireless LAN 2 to list item. Now, that's great, um, a great way to do it, but there is a, a faster way, and I like to do things faster, so I'm going to press space with the Z chord. Set up internet, I. And press F1. File manager, F. So now I'm back to the very beginning. Now, if I press, uh, if I press F3 with the letter I, 
Wireless LAN 2 to list item. It takes me right into the setup internet. So if setting up internet's the first thing you want to do, press F3 with the letter I and it takes you right there. Uh, I could go ahead and press enter here. H-O-M-E, E6462.4, encryption, W. All right, so uh, I'm here in my different, uh, I'm here in the list of access points. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my speech off real quick. Voice off. Um, so when you're in the list of access points, if they refresh, it will speak to you again. Uh, that's why I turned my speech off. So from here, I can uh, scroll down or scroll up to the different ones that I wanna go to. Um, I am connected to this home E646-5. That's great. Um, let's say I want to actually connect to the 2.4 encryption. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here, and I'm going to press enter on this. Voice on. Connected to HOME E6462.4. All right. And so, uh, because actually I have the same password uh, for my 2.4 and my 5 gigahertz band, uh, it actually just uh, connected right away. Let's say I wanted to go to something else. I could actually scroll down to, let's see, let's go to the fights. Uh, they're my neighbors here. Finity with H-O-M-E, Finity, encryption, Dunder Mifflin, can I, can I, two, the fights, encryption, WPA2, right. sensitivity, so I'll press network enter key here. dialog, and here network key, I'll be able box. to enter a network key, so I could just type uh, the password a, here, B, C. A, B, C, if I wanted to do Number sign, one, one, two, two three. three, right, and if that's the network key, then I'd go ahead and just press enter, and that would uh, connect me to the internet, assuming that was the proper network key. Uh, I'm gonna press F4 and then get rid of this network key dialog. Access point, the fights, encryption. And w, let's just assume fights, I typed encryption, it in properly. WPA2, sensitivity, low A to left. All right, so now that I've connected to the internet, um, uh, actually, let's go through one more real quick. I'm gonna go up to this Xfinity encryption 802.1x. This is actually a very popular type of Wi-Fi connection uh, that's found in schools. So I'm just gonna press device. space with dot encryption. four. W can I, can I five, Dunder Mifflin, encryption, Xfinity, encryption, 802 point network key dialog. So I press enter network on here. Network name, SSID, Xfinity edit box. So I've got the network name, uh, you know, obviously you wanna leave that there. You've got the network authentication mode. If I press space with dot four five or space or or F three, I'll move down to the next field. Network authentication mode eight hundred two point one XE combo box. I want to leave that there. Um, there's EAP method, phase two authentication, CA certificate. We're going to leave those all the same. The the next one that I really want to focus on is identity. So I'll press F three until I get there. Eat method peep combo phase two authentication non combo box CA certificate unspecified combo box. Identity edit box. So here, uh, the identity, this is where your username goes. So you just go ahead and type in your username. U -N. So you went for username. Uh, press F3 until I get down to the network key. Anonymous identity edit box. Network key, edit box. And this is where the password's gonna P go. W. So you type in your identity, your username, and the network key, uh, type in the password, and then you should be good to go. Um, uh, I'm just gonna assume that everything in here is correct. And so I would press enter and it would confirm everything. Um, since I'm not really connecting to this, I'm gonna press F4 and escape. Access point, Xfinity, encryption, 802.1X. I'm gonna one press X. F1 to get back to Excellent the main menu. List item. Mm -hmm. list item. Mm -hmm. File manager, F. F, 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 F. All right, so now that I'm uh, back in the file manager, uh, if I wanted to check to see if my network was connected, I could press space with the letter N as in Nancy. Checking. Status, online, wireless, static box. All right, so it said status online. So that means that I am in fact online. And I could actually go through here and I could learn about what network setting I'm on. SSID, HOME, E6462.4 static box. So that's the access point. And then most important, uh, or one of the most important things is your sensitivity. Sensitivity, excellent static box. Great, and then one other thing about setting up internet, if especially if you're in a school environment, um, you're going to want the MAC address, which can be also found at the very bottom, um, and that can also be found in some other locations on the Polaris. I'm going to press F4 to escape this. File Manager, F. All right. Thomas, if I could quickly add one thing there. Um, some of you may have the question, when he first pressed enter on his home network, he was asked for a web key that he could simply enter and press enter and he was done. When he pressed enter on this on this Xfinity network, 
there was a lot more information there that he was asked for. The Polaris is smart enough to know what kind of network that you're trying to connect to, and so therefore it's going to ask you for, for the credentials that it needs depending on your type of network, and the Polaris knows what that is. So for most home networks, you're simply going to need to know your, your password and your SSID, home, whatever his was, that would um, allow you to just simply connect to the internet. Hey Mike, just FYI, your mic is really hot. You can step, you can back away from it. It won't hurt anything. Thank you, Jimmy, is that better? Yes. Thank you. Okay, are we ready for the next one? Are you done, Thomas? Uh, I think I am. Okay. All right, uh, we're informal around here. Okay, so I'm going, I'm going to deal with email. So the first thing I'm Stop share, button enter key, current, current view is active speaker. Double tap to hide to alarm. There you go. Okay, no problem at all. That's okay, because I knew you stopped your share, so that's really good, um, because I need to start mine. So we'll get that going. Uh, screen. Okay. All right, can you see my screen? Are we good? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna voice on. Zoom. Turn voice on. Okay, so I'm gonna go through several things to do with email. Um, you can set up an email um, very easily with our built-in servers like Google, etc., without having to know all of the server settings. Um, however, there are sometimes special situations, especially with schools, where you have to set up two-factor authentication and you need to use um, what we call app-specific passwords. And this can happen with other, um, other providers than Google, but Google is one of the most common ones, especially that's used in schools. And so this, what I'm about to show you is not necessary most of the time for your personal accounts. This is usually going to happen in a work or school situation. And I'm not actually going to show up setting up the two-factor authentication. The reason that I'm not doing that is that generally, um, if you have an established account, this has either been already done by your administrator or before you're set, you have set up your Polaris, you're probably going to have to have done that just to use the account. So for purposes of setting up the Polaris, that part is probably already done. So right now I'm still in Zoom. I'm actually going to do this in Chrome. Um, on the Polaris, I'm going to go ahead and set up both the, um, the IMAP and pop forwarding and also the authentication. So we're going to go to the main menu. Manager, F. All apps. 11,000 quotes, settings, calendar, camera, can find, Chrome. And we're going to go to Chrome. Web view. Syllabus health, syllabus healthcare, syllabus healthcare mail, inbox, selected tab. Okay, so I already have my Selvis Healthcare mail inbox open. So what I need to do now, there are a couple of things that I need to access. I'm gonna press G. Edit box disable, press enter to enter or edit text button, go press the enter key to run. List George Zeno, select plus, list George Zeno, another pick, and here's Hold another on. one. Wait, list George Zeno, Selvis Healthcare mail inbox, select tab enter key to select. Button disable, go back. Just a moment. Button go forward, enter key to select. Google account key to select. Okay, this is actually what I'm looking for. Um, so it didn't actually place me at the, the top. So I went back to the top and started from the beginning. And I was just pressing the letter G because I'm in a uh, third party app, which is Chrome. I can use first letter nav for everything, including um, the items in the inbox. Okay, so um, there are a couple of things. I'm in a section, and right now I'm going to press F3 and space F3 to show you what's in this section so you know sort of what you're looking for. Standard view, enter key to select. Google account, enter key to select. Settings, enter key to select. Help, enter key to select. Okay, so this is one of these little panel areas, and one of the, this is the section that you want to go to. Um, I pressed G because that got me there faster than maybe pressing S. There's a lot of S things, so... Um, actually, what I need is settings first. Settings, enter key to select. And I'm going to press enter here. 46. 
Silvis Healthcare Mail, Silvis Healthcare Mail settings. Okay. Um, and you can also, of course, do this on the PC if that's easier. What I'm looking for right now is forwarding. I need to make sure that POP3 and IMAP forwarding is enabled before I do anything. So again, I'm going to press the letter F to try and jump there quickly. Edit box, folders. Filters, enter key to select. Forwarding and POP IMAP, enter key to select. Okay, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So from here, I'm going to press I to jump to IMAP. Images, enter key to select. Oops. Inbox, eight, enter key to select. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Silk folders. Filters, enter key to select. Forwarding and pop IMAP, enter key to select. Okay, we'll press enter. 46, 46. I'm losing my mind. Button search mail, press the enter key to select. Edit box disabled, press enter to enter or edit text. Folders. Filters, enter key to select. List forwarding and pop IMAP. List IMAP access. Access Silvis Healthcare Mail from other clients using IMAP. Learn more. 1. Status. IMAP is enabled. Enable IMAP. Disable IMAP 2. Configure your email client. For example, Outlook. Thunderbird. iPhone. Configuration instruct. Okay. Um, so again, what I'm doing is I'm using first letter navigation to jump to what I need. And it's very, very helpful if you have a set of instructions and it says, go to forwarding, go to IMAP, blah, blah, blah. It's very nice to be able to use first letter navigation instead of trying to navigate these pages, um, you know, just using F3 and space F3. So basically that's what I did. Now IMAP is enabled. So I really don't need to worry about dealing with that. But if I needed to set that, this is where I would do that. Um, I don't have POP3 enabled and I don't want to, but depending on how you want to set up your account, this is, what, this is the first thing that you have to do. So the second thing you have to do if you have two-factor authentication is to, to create an app-specific password. So again, I'm going to jump to the top. Silvis Healthcare Mail, Settings, Selected Tab, Button, Go Back, Enter Key to Select, Button, Disable, Go Forward, Google Account, Enter Key to Select. And I need to go here into Google Account, so I'm going to press Enter. Sorry? Would you slow your speech down a little bit, please? Voice rate seven. Voice rate six. <laughs> Humor me. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm sort of thinking, okay. oh, we need to, to hurry it along. So, yes. I know, um, I know. <laughs> okay, so we are in the Google account. And what I'm looking for here is security. So, again, I'm going to press S. Button search, press the enter key to run. Security enter key to select. And there it is. So again, I'm going to press enter. Google account. Okay, now what I want is app passwords. So again, I'm going to press A. Google account enter key to select. App, app passwords, one password enter key to select. Okay, and I'm going to press enter. 46. Okay. Syllabus, pop, edit box, disabled password, press enter to enter or edit text. And now I actually have to enter my password for my email account. This is the general password that I've set because it doesn't want to let me make changes unless I really verify that it's me. So I'm going to press enter to enable this edit box. Computer Braille is required. And I'll type in my password. Okay. Button show password, press the enter key to button next, press the enter key to run. And I'm just pressing F3 to navigate to next and press enter. Enter key to select 46. 46. Selvis, Selvis health, Selvis healthcare, save password, options available. New. Okay, so now I'm going to again jump down to the app passwords section with the letter A. Account enter key to select. App passwords, selected tab enter key to select. App passwords. Okay. Account enter key to select. More options. Press the end button. Google apps. Press the enter button. Google account. Gen button back. Press the learn more. Enter key to select. Ah. List names created. Last used. Revoke access. Okay. So it's letting me know I actually have one already. And so I can um, access that. I could revoke access to the current password I have. <clears throat> but I can also create another. List gallery 1, April 15th. A button revoke up password, press the end. List showing six items. Enter key. List select app. Enter key to select. So now I have two list boxes, and I need to make a couple of choices here. The first one that I need to decide is what apps I want this to be available for. Now, I am going to tell you something. I was determined to do this entirely on Polaris. And I will say that we have a bit of a, a glitch here in that. I can't select from this list box with the Polaris select keyboard. Select enter key to select. Um, we will fix that. <laughs> but for now, it's actually very easy to handle it. I just plugged in a QWERTY keyboard, and I can do it that way. And so I'm going to do that really quick. More options. Press the en account enter key to select. 
More options, press button Google account, Jenny Axler, button back, press the enter key, learn more, enter key to button, revoke up, pass, list, select app, enter key to select. Okay, so now I'm just tabbing using my QWERTY keyboard, and I'm going to press the down arrow. List, list mail, enter key to select. And that is actually what I want, so I'm going to tab again. List select device, enter key to select. And I'm going to press the down arrow. List, list iPhone and list iPad, list Blackberry, list Mac, list Windows phone, list Windows computer, enter key to list other, custom name, enter key to select. Okay, and this is what I want. Privacy policy, enter key to select. List select device, enter key to select. List, list iPhone, list selective, list ah. iPhone, list iPad, enter key to select, list Windows phone, list other, custom name, enter key to select. Edit box disable, press enter to enter or edit text. And now it wants me to name it. So again, I'll press enter to enable the edit box. Input has been changed to computer braille as QWERTY keyboard supports only computer braille mode. Okay. Button switch to selectors, press the enter key to run. So I just want to verify that. So I'm going to shift tab back. Pop color is two. Okay. Button switch to selectors, pre button generate, press the enter key to run. So now there's this generate. And this is going to generate a password that I can use to use my secure Gmail on my Polaris. So I'll press enter here. Generating new app password. Button disable generate. Press the enter key to run. Your app password for your device just to wax all and how to use it. Go to the Google. Okay. <clears throat> the first thing that I want to make sure and tell you, because again, this looks like it's, it's very complicated and too much work. So you only have to do this one time. Um, so I do advise you to write this password down so that you, you can generate as many as you want. So if you ever need to do this again, you can. But I would suggest writing this down so that you don't have to go through these steps only one time. So if you have multiple Polaris units, it's no problem. You can use the same one. Um, what I'm going to do right in here is um, change to computer braille because I want to make sure that I do not get this wrong. Uncontracted braille. I was already in computer, computer braille. braille. Okay. Button run, press the enter key to run. Enter key to select. Button done, press the enter. Your app password for your device to to wax all how to use it. Okay, and I want to be able to read this. All right, so I'm going to leave this open and leave this um, at the app password so that I can return to it. Okay, now it gets easier. <laughs> File manager, F. So now we're going to open up the email program. Preparing message list. Subject. Okay, I'm going to open up. Accounts manager dialog. Account name, Jaxler112 list item. Okay, so I opened up the accounts manager with enter M. Now I'm going to press enter A to add an account. And again, you can always find these things if you press space one and space four, or F3 and space F3. If you explore, you'll always be able to find these controls. Add dialog. Server type manual one for list item. Okay, and I want to choose Google, and this is a list item, so I'll press space four. Google two for list item. I'm going to press F3 for the next control. Default mail server, pop three radio button. And I'm going to press space to change this to IMAP. IMAP radio button. Okay. And again, I'm looking at um, RB for radio button. This tells me what I have to do. And there is a section in the manual, I believe it's section 2.11, that will explain if you have any questions about what these things mean, LI, RB, et cetera, it will explain what they are and what to do with them. I'm gonna press tab again. Account name, Google edit box. <clears throat> I'm going to say sell this. Display name, edit box. Okay, and I'm going to type in my name. Comma J59. Oh, I'm in F -A computer -A -F -J comma. That's fine. Jenny. Log on username, computer edit box. Okay, and I'm going to type in my username. Uppercase. And of course, all of this does have to be in computer rail when anytime you enter an email address or password. Password, computer edit box. Okay, so now for this, I need that app specific password. So I'm going to go to my task manager with F1 and F4. Task name, email 33 list item. Task name, Chrome 23 list. And I'm going to go back to this. Button done, press the enter key to run. 
your app password for your device to select solves and how to use it. Go to the settings for your Google account in the application or device you are trying to set up. Replace your password with the 16 character password show. Okay, so it's telling me what to do. And I'm going to, I, my memory is terrible, so I'm probably going to have to go back and forth a couple of times here. Okay, so. Task name, Zoom. Oh. Task name, current view is active speaker. Double tap to hide file manager. Task name, Zoom 1, 3 list item. Task name, task name, email 3, 3 list item. Password, computer edit box. And again, I'm going to have to go back. Task name, email 3, 3 list item. Task name, Chrome 2, 3 list item. This is a little bit painful. I, <laughs> but if you write it down, it's not actually as painful. <laughs> so it's just because I'm doing it like this. In front of 15. Button, button, press the enter key to run. Your Sorry. Password for your device. In front of 15 of your, your closest friends. <laughs> <laughs> My mess, I'm telling you, my memory is just shot. <laughs> um, it's not even seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, item. I know, there is that. Ask me, email three, three. Look, we'll catch you some slack getting up early. Okay, one more time. Ask me, email three, three list item. Yeah, it's like 16 Task digits, name. too. Chrome. And if I get it wrong, it's just gonna. <laughs> no, you, you could have read it to me, and I could have wrote it down and told you what it was. You know, there is that. <laughs> but you're, you're Task in name. it. One, two, three, list item. Task name. Password. Computer edit box. Okay. Okay, we've got it done finally. Okay. Email address. Computer edit box. And again, I have to enter my email address. Uppercase. Incoming IMAP server in the gmail.com computer edit box. So from here, this is pretty much all filled in. So the, the great thing about using a standard server like Google is that we do fill in a lot of the server information for you. So you need your username, your email address, and your password, which, as I said, if you have a, a personal account and you don't have to do all this, you generally know without all of this fuss. So um, I actually don't need to change anything else. I'm going to show you that there is an advanced dialog. Advanced button. And I'm going to take a look here. Advanced dialog. Secure IMAP, IMAP SSL, yes radio button. So it's giving me um, options for security, SSL, and uh, out. IMAP port number, 993 edit box. SMTP encryption type, T SMTP port number, 587. Use as default Centrum account, no list item. Signature button. Okay, and you can set a signature in here. As I said, though, all of these things are already configured for Gmail. So you don't actually need to change anything. If, there, if you don't want to have a, a signature or you don't want to change the default, um, obviously, if it's your only account, it's going to go to the default. Um, I'm just going to press F4 here to escape. Advanced button. Okay, and I'm going to go to confirm. Confirm button. And I'm going to press enter. Successfully added account. Account name, Salvas33 list item. So, all right, the next thing I'm going to do is press escape. I'm now back in the accounts manager, so I need to press escape one more time. Account name, Jaxler113 list item, inbox16 list item. Okay, so now I'm back in my message, my normal message list. I have my account, my inbox, all of that. I need to move to the um, next account. So I'm going to press backspace 345 to move to the next set of inboxes. Getting new message list. Invalid account information. Account and name. That is actually not the account we're looking for, so we're going to go forward again. Or so this three, three list actually, item. I also have the accounts in a list. So when I'm on the account name edit box, so there's, <laughs> there's a couple ways that you can do this. If you're in a message list, you can move from inbox to inbox with backspace 345. If you are in the list, you can also just choose it from the list. So I'm going to press tab here. Receiving mailboxes. And now this is my sell this account. <clears throat> And if it comes up as invalid, I'm, I am Mailbox, do... inbox 113 list item. Okay, everything's great. Okay, good, good. I was going to say it's probably just me entering the password wrong because I did test this before. I know it works. So 
Okay, and it did actually work. So I have my list of mailboxes. And again, if I wanted to actually look and see what's here, I can press tab one more time, which is getting new message list. And this does take a bit to make happen. With IMAP, of course. <laughs> this is this is the first time on this device with iMap. That's right. Yes. And you've so, got the correlation between how long it takes to draw this list and the thousands of emails that you've got waiting. Beta testing. Okay. And so I now have my inbox and everything is up. I'm actually going to go ahead and close that. Oh. So. As I don't think we all need to see my myself as male. Um, but yes, the first time that you do this, it is going to take a little bit of time. So that is notable. When you refresh it, it will not take as much time to, uh, to handle this. File manager, F. Okay, and also again, I really want to reiterate, it is not that complicated to set up email as a rule. Um, when you are setting up a personal account, you don't need to do anything with, with the app passwords and the security. But we showed that because many, many schools are using Google and they do use two-factor authentication. Even my work does the same thing. So um, it's also used in many professional settings. So you do need to know how to set that up if it's necessary. But for personal accounts, of course, none of that is. Now, I'm actually going to go and set up an exchange email um, account. This is much, much easier. And this is something that we have new in um, our 3.4 release. And for those of you who are able to access a Microsoft Exchange server, this is really slick, very quick, um, and the setup is much, much easier. So I'm back at my main menu, and I'm going to press L to go to Exchange Email. Getting new message list. And I do- Sell this one, one list item. Okay, and I do have an account set up here. Um, also, this is actually- Subject three, colon. It's an old sell this email account. I'm actually going to set it up again under a different account name just to show you how this is done. So again, the um, interface is very similar to the, the original email program. So I'll press enter M to open the accounts manager. Accounts manager dialog, account name, and sell press this one. Enter A. Account name, edit box. Okay, and now it's asking me for the account name. So I'm just going to do exchange text. Exchange. Okay. New signature, no list item, account name, exchange test, edit box. So as you can see here, this doesn't have an advanced dialog. Everything's in the same dialog. Um, so if I tab here. New signature, no list item, signature, multi-line edit box, confirm button, cancel button, account name, exchange test, edit box. Okay, now I need to finish setting up the account. So I'm going to press space four to go down. Exchange server rule, computer edit box. And again, I need to enter the, um, the Exchange Server URL, which you should be able to get from your administrator. So this is just a, um, an email, a, the Exchange email server. So, hold on. Oh, I did it backwards. It's a period. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Down we go. Log username, computer edit box. And Jenny, that's very simple. Password, computer edit box. And that's hidden for you. And that's all you need to do, actually, is just enter all of these things here. I'm already done, so I'm going to press enter. Server name already exists. Password, computer edit box. Okay, um, I'm actually not gonna worry about that, but what that's telling me is that I've already actually set up an account for this server. Um, as a rule, if you press enter, it's going to say, you know, successfully created account and it's going to refresh the list just as I did when I opened. So it's basically that simple. Um, so if you can use an exchange account, it's, it's very, very easy to set up. If you're using a personal account, it's not too much different. You fill in everything that I showed you in the original email program. If you do need to use something with two-factor authentication, you're generally going to have to set up an app-specific password the way I showed you in Google. That's also available for other um, administrators, other email providers as well. So I think that's all I have.
So next, I believe we're going to switch it over to Mike. So let me stop sharing my screen. Task name, exchange email, three, three list item. Task name, Zoom one, three list item. Just a moment. Current view is active speak. Start my video, enter key to stop share, button, enter key to okay. select. Current, current view is active speaker, double voice off. Okay, Mike, take it away. Thank you, Ginny. Sorry about that. Um, I think we're all having our share of, of little small issues today. So I'm going to share my screen. And, and then I'm going to turn on my speech. Thomas, hopefully you see file manager right there. I do not see your screen just yet. How about now? Mm, still not yet. Interesting. Okay, well, let me go back into Zoom again. And I will go to share. And I will go to screen. Do you see my screen now? Yes, I do. All right. So I'm going to turn on my speech here. Voice on. File manager, F. And so as, as Thomas showed us about how connecting with start with our quick start guide, and then Jenny showed us about our email. Um, one thing that is important if you want to download third party apps to your Polaris is you need to be able to download apps to your Polaris, much like if you're using an Android phone or an iPhone or a computer, you go download specific apps to it. And in order to do that, you have to log in with a Google account. So what you need to have is a Gmail address and a password that you know. So what I'm going to do now, because I do not have a Google account on this device, um, there's a couple of ways to do it, but the most simple way is to go in from the Google Play Store. So I'm going to simply press the letter P. Updating apps. One app left. Button cancel updates. Press the enter key. Cancel up button options. Enter key to select. And I'm now, I could tab through here, but I know that we have a sign in link. So I'm going to press S for sign in. Sign in to find the latest Android apps, games, movie, button sign, and press the enter key to run. I pressed S twice. I'm going to press enter here. Account setup. Checking info. So I'm now sign going... In with, sign in with your Google account. Look. So I'm now going to tab with F3. Button learn more about Google accounts. Press the enter key to run. Tab again. Edit box disabled. Press enter to enter or edit text. Now I'm now at an edit box where it wants an email address and I know that. So I'm going to press enter here. Edit box to see computer braille is required. And I'm looking on my braille display. I see a cursor. That means I can type. So I'm going to type in my Gmail address. M I T I N D E L L zero one up at G M A I L Postbox M. And I have that in there. I'm going to press tab. Button forgot email. Press the enter key to run. And I'm looking for a next button, so I'm just going to press the letter N for next. Button next. Press the enter key. Press run. enter on that. Hi Mike. Edit box disabled password. Press enter. So it knows that I'm here, and it now wants a password. I'll press enter. I see my cursor, so I can simply type in my password. Voice off. Voice on. And I'm now going to type in for next again. Button next, press the enter key to run. 
Hi, hi, Mike. We publish the Google Terms of Service so that you know what to. So now I'm going to press A or I. Button, I agree. Press the enter key. Now you notice there I said A or I, and I, and I did that deliberately because it's either an agree button or an I agree button. And I pressed A, nothing happened, so I tried I for I agree. Now, if I didn't know that was there, I could also press tab a bunch of times and get to it. I'm going to press enter on I agree. Checking info. Google, Google sir, showing items one to four at four. Backup, ampersand, button handle zero one. Privacy policy, enter key to back up to Google Drive. Switch on, press the enter key to button accept, press the enter key to run. I have an accept button that I will press. I, I pressed tab to get to it, or I could have typed an A for accept. Press enter on accept. Stop share, button enter key to select. Play store. So I am. Enter key to <clears throat> so I am now placed in my Play Store, and uh, so I have complete access now to the Google Play Store. So I'm going to press Z code and close the Play Store. Play Store P. That is how simple it is to add a Google account to a device. So now that we've added an account, I'm going to go back into the Play Store, and I'm already sitting on the Play Store. I'm just going to press enter here, or I, or I could type a P. Play Store. Games enter key to select. And everything is here, and it's now refreshed. So the next thing that I want to do is to search for an app. So I'm going to press the letter S until I hear search. Button show navigation drawer, enter image show navigation drawer. New notifications available. Search for apps, ampersand. I heard search for apps. That's what I want, so I will press enter. Search for apps, ampersand, games. And I pressed enter, and I see a cursor, so I'm just going to press A, P, P, L, E, Apple, M, U, at I, C. And I'll press enter on Apple Music. Button navigate up, enter key to select. So now I need to see if I can find a result for Apple Music. So I'm going to press A. Button Apple Music, enter key to select. Apple Music, Apple Incorporated, enter key to select. If I press enter here, this is what I want, Apple Music, and it's by Apple Incorporated. Details for app button. If I want to install the app, I could, again, everything I'm telling you, I could press tab. If I just want to explore things, I can press tab, and the Polaris will read everything on my screen. Think of it like using JAWS. F3 is tab. Space F3 is like shift tab. But I know that I want to install this app, so I'm going to type an I to find the install button. Button image of app or game icon for Apple Music. Another I. Button install, press the enter key for run. There's my install button, so I will press enter. Apple Music needs access to. And now it's saying that Apple Music needs access to some things on my device, which I'm going to give it access to by pressing A to accept. Button accept, press the enter key for And run. I will press enter here. Place button navigate up, enter key to select. So if I press tab, Button search, Google Play, enter key, to button more options, enter, download in progress. I hear download in progress. The device is now downloading and installing Apple Music. Button image of app or game icon for app, download in progress. It's taking a couple seconds because Apple Music is a rather large program. Button navigate up, enter key to select. It is now done. Button search, Google Play, enter, button more options, enter key, button image of app or game like Apple Music. Button Apple Incorporated, enter, button uninstall, press the enter key to run. Button open, press the enter key to run. Now I'm pressing F3 here, and you see all the different options that I have. 
I could press enter here to simply open Apple Music at this point, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to press the letter Z chord or space with Z, Z chord. Play store, Z. And I will do L chord for file manager. File manager, F. And any third party that we install. So, for example, we have Zoom on our Polaris's. I have Go Read. Um, there's a lot of different apps on my machine. And in order to find those apps, I would press the letter A for all apps. Apple Music. And the first app that I find, because I have it downloaded now on my machine, is Apple Music, because it begins with A. All of the apps are in chronological order. So if I were to press Z to go to Zoom, Zoom. I'll press Enter. Current view with Zach and Speaker. And I have now opened my Zoom app, so I'm going to press the letter S. Start my video, enter, keep, stop, share. Button, enter, and I'm going to press select. Enter because I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Earl to show you some cool things about doing some Google searches and some videos. All right, thank you very much. Good job on that. It's, you know, we're, we're after the five o'clock hour here, and I've got a very short one here. So guys, bear with me. I thought maybe I should maybe carry this over to the um, the presentation coming up on Friday, which has to, that's all, out of, all about Zoom. And I know that you guys are attending to this Zoom webinar, and you're thinking, well, you know, <laughs> what is there to know? I'm already here. But there's going to be a lot of things that, that we discussed, um, such as the difference between having a Zoom account, um, because when you do have a Zoom account, that Zoom client changes. And when you try to access uh, your Zoom account online, you'll see that there's a whole nother world out there as well. But my part of this presentation is going to be on the... Um, Okay, I'm going to turn this up here. My, my part is going to be on doing a, a quick Google search. And let's see here. Pins Incorporated. One enter key to select. All right. That's really actually very... Can you guys hear that okay? It's a bit soft. Oh, oh I know. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, bump up the speech volume here. Voice, voice, vo voice volume ten. And now voice, I'm overloading this. Overloading the circuit. Hang on. Main volume. Main volume. Main volume four. Ah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, so one of the questions people ask me, and maybe the uh, 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 a Zoom webinar isn't the place to to talk about this, but the web browser. Um, it's no secret that people who have the Polaris um, have some issues with with the web browser and I got to tell you I love my Polaris I bought one for myself but I did not buy it because of the web browser um, it's not the strong point of the Polaris you can get some things done but even today there are some controls that don't work um, real well and it, you're kind of at the mercy of the web web developer and how how things are authored but with that said, what Mike just did in the Play Store, what we, and what we're able to do by downloading apps and things like that, it kind of makes, while the web browser is an important part of it, there are just so many other ways to get things done. Um, so one of the things that we had in the BrailleSense YouTube Final manager, F. was the- hey, uh, Earl, it, can you go ahead and share your screen, please? Oh, I forgot, gosh. You know, that's the kind of thing a blind guy would do Calendar. is forget to share a screen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to do that right now. Uh, come on. YouTube. Okay, Zoom. Zoom. In Zoom. Current view is active speaker. Double tap to hide toolbox. Start my video. Enter key to select. Uh, share. Button enter key to share. select. Share. Button photo enter key to select. Button screen enter key to select. Screen. Zoom. And am I sharing my screen right now? Yep. All right, very good. So one of the things that we had in the YouTube was a Google search utility, and that was a hotly requested feature that had recently been entered into the, the Polaris as well. Final manager, F. So I simply went back to my main menu by pressing F1, 
and I'm going to just go ahead and press B for browser tools, right? Web browser B. Used to be a very lonely web browser in here, but now we've got something called Google Search. Google B. Search. And all I did was press uh, space with uh, dot for that legacy uh, Braille note taker keystroke that brings us down to the next item here. And I'm going to press enter to get into the Google Search. search. And right away, I'm brought into a search term edit box. So you see, instead of having to go through a, a Google browser, you know, like the Chrome browser or any of the other browsers, and go to google.com and then have to suffer through all of these scrolling banners and advertising, I'm brought it directly into an edit field where I can just type something in and get the top 64 results for that search. And you know, if you can't find, um, what you're looking for in the top 64 results, probably you should um, narrow your search a little bit more with your, your keywords. But last night, um, I was looking for an, um, a user manual for the device that I'm actually piping my sound through today. It's called the Task Gam Model 24, which is the digital recorder. So I, I, I just typed in, I came here and I typed in Task Gam. A S. C A M Task Gam. Uh, model twenty four. Model uh, two four. Twenty four. Uh, user manual. User manual. And that's what I was up doing until about two thirty this morning. Sorry, I know Jim. when you're in a uh, stay at home world, all the time just kind of runs together, doesn't it, guys? Right now, what I'm looking at is a model 24 downloads task item, uh, United States 164 list item already done. So, I mean, so what I saw was a, um, from left to right, the cells were filling up with Braille to indicate that we're, you know, we've got something going on, our progress indicator. And I'm brought into a nice clean list of, of choices based on my search criteria. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, navigate down through the list, space dot four. Model 24, recorder user manual, 264 list item. And that is what I brought up when I read. I actually fell asleep in the middle of it, had to go back. Um, so I could go there, and it'll actually bring me into the, to the, the user manual, and I had the option of actually downloading the PDF for that. Model 24 owners, manual 364 list item. Which worked really well. Task and model 24 downloads, 464 list item. Uh, okay. Model 24 overview, task and United States 564 list item. Model 24 664 list item. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pick one of these. Model 24 overview task item. Because really, list it's, item. it's just a simple matter of selecting the item in this nice list and pressing the enter key. And I see Model Starting web 24, browser. and it's, it's actually launching my web browser, which is the HIMS web browser because that is the one that is selected by default, but you can actually change that to the Chrome web browser. Model 24 overview task. If you wanted to. Um, model 24 overview task. So I'm in the model 24 overview and I could just read this page. Model 24 overview task in the United States. Taskim.com link. Taskim brand logo white SVG. And I just did an enter G to read this. Contractor permanent installation link. Computer recording desktop audio production link. Live sound reinforcement recording link. Broadcasting streaming gaming link. Audio for video sound design link. Portable recording link. Professional recording link. Browse by type link. Browse by type. Computer recording and audio interfaces link. Okay, so I've got, and trainers link. I've got a lot of studios choices and here. Link. I'm just going to press enter backspace. To, it's the same as pressing the control when you're using a uh, screen reader on the computer. It tells it to be quiet, backspace, and enter. That's an important one. Um, and you can see it was just really that simple to, to conduct a search. Now, if I were to land on a YouTube page, it would very, you know, it, it would just go ahead and, um, and and play the video, you know, it, if I'm presented with a link to play the video. And um, that brings me to another thing. Let's just go directly to YouTube at this point because this is something I wanted File manager. to yeah. show. Back into my main menu, I press A for all applications. Calendar. And again, um, first letter navigation supported throughout the entire system. So press the letter Y YouTube. for YouTube and I'm in. After I press the enter key here, you button home, press the enter key to run. And let's just say that I want to do an, a, a search on YouTube. Button subscriptions, new content is available. Press the enter key to run. I press S for uh, subscription. I, I hear a line on subscription. I've got new content available. 
button search enter key. And here's the, the search. List, uh, list point enter electric guitar enter key to select. Okay, so this actually populated some, some other things that I had looked for uh, previously. Um, so the Voyager electric guitar and that kind of thing. But if I want to go ahead and button subscriptions, narrow my search. Button subscriptions, new content is available, press the enter key. Button subscriptions, new content is available, ah. press the enter key. Voyager. Button action menu, Voyager Blair folding electric guitar demos. Button navigate up, enter key to select. I gotta navigate up. I somehow YouTube. got down into YouTube. Voyager. Button video enter key to select. Button search enter key to select. Button subscriptions, new ah. content is available. Button search enter key to select. And then there's the little bit of floundering that one electric guitar enter key to select. So let's just say. Button edit suggestion, Voyager electric guitar enter key. List hymns incorporated, enter key to select. So, so it actually remembers a lot of the things that I've been to before. And I'm just going to go. Tips for using it for safer and easier holiday travel. 45 minutes. Go to channel. Hymns incorporated. 284 views. Three years ago. Play video. Oh, wow. We select. got some things from Blast from the past. Three years ago already on the, on, on the Polaris. And, and if I go ahead and start, if I press enter on any of these things. Button action menu, enter key to select. Webinar transitioning from Braille note to Braille since one hour five minutes. Oh, button action menu. Oh, we don't want to show that one. Key to select. All right. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. <laughs> so that's just how easy it is. And if I were to press enter on any of these, and keeping in mind that we're you know, we, we've actually run out of time, I'm just going to go ahead and stop there and bring it back to Jenny. Do you have anything to add to that, Jenny? Can you or guys hear me? Any of the guys, actually, yeah. Yep. Oh, Jenny, you just muted yourself. <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> we can hear you now. I'll say great job, Earl. Thank you. Oh, I can stop sharing my video, can't I? I'll Sorry, do that. I, I switched to... Final manager. No. Calendar. Um, no, I, I don't really... Oh, you're far away from your microphone right now. Double tap the mic. I'm going to go ahead and, I'm gonna hit and stop sharing... Um, my screen here. Sorry. Zoom meeting ID ninety four billion eight hundred seventy six. Start my video. Enter key to select. Share button. Enter key to select. Oh. Start my video. Enter key to select. Oh, I uh, I'm sharing my computer now. Oh, oh you did. You, did you already stop sharing me? Yep. Good oh. Job. God, that's control freakish. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that basically is the presentation for uh, or the various presentations. And we, again, just sort of wanted to make sure that we covered the basics. If you're missing any of these basic functions um, as you purchase new Polarises or set things up for a student or just um, need to know exactly what this thing can do, this sort of just runs through some of the setup and how it operates using both the internal and Android applications, right, downloading, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So um, now we will open it up for questions. Um, and Thomas, if you want to sort of handle those, that would be great. Sure. So the first question uh, says, uh, "I'm new to the players. Is there a way I could say something like, hey, Google,' and get the Google Assistant?" Ah, yes. Yes, we didn't show that. Oh um, it's actually, it's very, very simple. Um, and this is something we often forget: are the voice capabilities. So. Um, I, I do also want to mention that with Earl, what he just did on YouTube, there is a voice search possibility and you can use that. Um, but yes, you can do the, hey Google or okay Google. And now my device is, yep, I knew that was gonna happen. They started to go off. Um, and it was my Polaris as a matter of fact. So you can access this with a shortcut. Um, it is, on the front of the device, there are the media buttons, which we've covered in, in other webinars. If you press the record and play key at the same time, it will bring this up. You can also set in the Google app that it will automatically respond to your voice as well, just like any Android phone. So you can handle that a couple of ways. Um, in addition, you can actually use other voice assistants. You can download apps uh, from the the Play Store for Alexa, et cetera. And I actually do have one called um, Ultimate Alexa that I think works very, very well. So not only can you use Google, but you can use um, many voice assistants. We even downloaded a Korean one um, from Naver over here called Clova, and it also works. So yeah, pretty much anything you want. If the app is accessible, you can use it as well as Google. All right. Um, we've got another question here. Uh, Sharon, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead and uh, ask your question. Sharon, you're live. Oh. 
uh, Sharon. I'm yes, I think I'm good. unmuted. There you, um, there you are. I had trouble with um, putting my charter email. Um, for a long time, I was getting it, but all of a sudden, it just stopped where I couldn't get uh, my email. And when I called charter, they said, is it, can you tell it to authenticate? And I didn't find anywhere to do that. And I um, asked tech support, this was back in November and December, and I didn't ever get anything resolved. So I, I just quit checking my charter email on it. So, um, I think that's been addressed in this release. I think um, Charter uses the AT&T um, protocol, and I believe that that has been fixed in the release 3.4. So perhaps try it again. And if you still have problems, contact tech support again, and we'll deal with that there, if you could. OK, and it's good to you, you're, uh, you're and Mike again, because I used to be Sharon Klug. So it's good to hear you all. Sharon, it's good to hear you as well. I recognize that voice. It's good to see you. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. So we've got a couple other questions. Um, is there a webinar available for setting up a personal email account? Oh, um, okay. So basically, and I'm sorry, I, I had a feeling this was going to get confusing. So the personal email account is exactly the same process as the, the first email setup that I showed. Um, the only difference is that I went and set up this other password first. But if you already have, you know, you know, of course, your password, you don't need to go through that step, you know, all the things that I did in Chrome. But um, no, it's, it's actually exactly the same as what I did with the first email part. When I set up IMAP, you could choose POP3, but the setup is, is exactly that. All right. So the next question, um, one real basic question I have is how to type an at sign when I'm in computer braille. I have to go to contract a braille from computer braille and do space <laughs> u dot I have the answer for you. Go for it. It is uh, space with uh, dot four and dot seven. So space backspace dot four is how you issue the at sign. That incidentally is also how you issue a capital letter. All is right. by holding space and backspace. Space, backspace. And, I'll, and I'll also add to that if you're like me and you're from the old school, space with you followed by dot four is another way to do it. Does that work with the players? I do yes. it all the time. <laughs> yes, so, so both methods, and they, they actually mention that in there. So yes, you can either do space U followed by dot four or for a cap by the letter, or you can do backspace space and dot four or and or the letter. All right, up next, uh, Rhonda. <clears throat> I'm gonna unmute you. And it seems to take just a second. All these people are internet browsing on their web, internet, busy internet traffic. <laughs> well, I'm trying to unmute you, Rhonda, but it's not letting me. All right, so while we're waiting to unmute Rhonda, how about we uh, go to the next one? Um, regarding email account setup, can I have both POP and IMAP enabled simultaneously? Yes. So remember, I was explaining that if you press backspace dots 345, then it moves you between accounts. Um, that will allow you, you can have as you can have multiple pop mail accounts, you can have pop and IMAP. If you're familiar with the U2, you remember that all pop mailboxes were together in, in one email box. It's not the case on Polaris. Every account has its own separate set of mailboxes. So it doesn't matter what you set up. If you have two pop mail accounts and one IMAP, three IMAP and one pop account, it doesn't make any difference. You just press backspace dots 345 to move between those accounts. All right. Uh, Rhonda, I still cannot seem to unmute you for some reason. Um, but if you want to go ahead and type in your question into the Q&A uh, chat box, we'll go ahead and uh, answer your question there. 
Um, so somebody is asking, how can I set up or how can I set up the setting from voiceover from an iPad? Um, I, so that's actually a webinar that we're going to be covering a little bit later on. Uh, isn't that right, Mike? What was the question though? Um, how do I set up uh, the setting from voiceover from iPad? I'm assuming the question is how do you pair with an iPad? Yeah, and we'll yeah, we are going to cover later. that on it on another webinar. Um, if you need access to that instantly, recommend that you contact our technical yes. support department. But the short answer. Yeah. Go ahead, Earl. Right. So the short answer to that is uh, the, the things to remember are you you, you go into um, terminal for screen reader on the Polaris and you've got to pair it within from within voiceover, not from within the Bluetooth dialogue on the iPad. It has to be from within voiceover. And that is yes. the case with every Braille display in the world. Yes, so not the Bluetooth manager on Polaris and not right. the Bluetooth setting on the iPad, either one. Terminals for screen reader on the Polaris and voiceover on the exactly. iPad. Exactly. All right. Um, Somebody writes, will Exchange be working for email soon? Projected date. Uh, yes, email or Exchange is working right now. Yes. Yeah, she set up an Exchange account yeah, a little while ago. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's in the public release. This is not a beta. Yep, so if you don't have the Exchange email program uh, on your Polaris, you're gonna wanna update your firmware and it will be there. Right. All right, Rhonda, we've got you now. Okay. Uh, you can hear me okay? We can. Okay. My question has to do with the notification. Um, I keep getting a notification that says messaging is no longer supported. Go and download messaging app. And I can dismiss all of my other notifications, but I can't right. dismiss this one. So it shows up. <sighs> That's because Google doesn't let us do that. Um, however, you can actually make it go away. Um, if you install anything like Skype or um, WhatsApp or anything, it will actually take that over and go away. So I don't know if you have any wish to do that, but if you don't, um, if you go into Hangouts, you can turn that off. There's the settings in Google Hangouts, which is an um, auto included application in uh, on your Polaris, you can actually turn it off. Thank you. All right. And then we've got another question here. Uh, let's see. The IT specialist at the school and I were unable to set up the email uh, main menu account, but Gmail works fine through all apps. Is there a cheat sheet for navigating around Gmail? Um, did you set up the app specific password? That's, that's partly why I showed that because if you're in a school setting, you will probably have to do that. I'm, I imagine that they're using two factor authentication. And so it probably lets you authenticate through the Gmail program, but to use the Polaris email program, you need to set up that app specific password. That's, that's why I showed that. Does that make sense? I know that doesn't directly answer your question. Um, but if you want to use the, the Polaris email program is much easier to use. So while that setup is a little bit annoying, you can do it on your PC um, and, I th and create that app specific password and that would make things easier and allow you to set it up. Um, and to add to that, we do have some cheat sheets for it, but they need to be updated to include the um, app specific password. Um, we should have those available for you soon. Uh, and I took down your name, and once those are available, I will email it to you. Yeah, with on the top of our app specific passwords, um, you know, we're talking about how I mean, we at Hims are using G Suite, and we had to set it up for our Polaris, and and of course schools are using it too. I seem to remember reading that the checkbox that's available now under uh, Gmail security that says allow less secure apps is going to go away. And everybody's going to be eventually required to use two-factor authentication and app-specific passwords. Yeah, I actually didn't see it when I was using Chrome on the Polaris. It might be available on the PC, but that's right. He, he was right about that. 
So it may be already gone, but if it's not, it soon will be. <laughs> I read that it was going to be leaving in June. Um, okay. So, yeah. All right. So we've got a question from uh, Shireen. Uh, I think you're going to have to unmute yourself. I'm going to let you talk. There we go. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. So, excuse me, where will I turn speech off? Um, <laughs> So uh, I have the Gmail, first of all, I'm really new to the Polaris, transitioning from YouTube. Um, I went ahead and downloaded the Gmail, uh, you know, all apps Gmail. Um, am I hearing that that's more difficult to use and I really need to work through setting my accounts up? Yeah, I say accounts. There's ultimately, I'm hoping to have more than one um, up through the Polaris or is Gmail? If I can answer that, Sharon, this is Mike. Um, let me just quickly say that for anyone out there who is thinking of buying a new Polaris, um, we are providing training, an hour of training with your Polaris if you purchase it like within the next, what, month, two months. Um, that promotion is going on. And Sharon, you've taken part of that purchase i know because uh we are having a training you yeah. and me tomorrow <laughs> so yeah. so i but what i what, what i want to say about this is um we can cover some of the some of that in your in your training but for other people who is not going to be at your training um and i hope an hour as, will be enough <laughs> as, as jenny as jenny mentioned a while ago um one of the things that I certainly will emphasize as well, anytime that you can use a, a, an app, for example, we created Google search in the U2. It was so popular that we brought the Google search back to the Polaris as Earl showed you today. Um, our email browser that we created, and the reason why we create those apps is because we make them with lots of hotkeys and we make them for those of us who are blind to use them easier. Another prime example from the file manager, if you go into file manager, the, the option below flash disk or SD card or USB, whatever you have installed, is Google Drive. Why did we create that app or that, that way to do it? because it's easier to manage your data. So anytime that you can use a, an, an app that, that has been created by HIMSS for a Polaris or a U2 or whatever you're using, by all means, use that app as use opposed app. to finding a mainstream app. If there is not an app that we've created, then by all means, yeah. Mainstream apps are there in the majority, you know, a lot of them are very accessible and they work. I think it's a matter of preference. I don't want to say that you shouldn't use the Android apps. If someone likes to do that and likes their functions, then certainly, you know, you, you can do that. It's doable just as today I used Chrome. Um, do I prefer our web browser? Uh, yes. I, I do, but I also wanted to show that it is certainly possible to use Chrome, and sometimes it does, um, it's, it's a little bit of a smoother experience depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, sorry, sorry. So I think it is. I think it's a matter of preference what you want to do. But yes, we do make our interfaces a little bit more um, streamlined for blind people and, you know, with more keystrokes as just exactly as Mike said. So it's not a have to. It's just usually right. a preference. And we do that because most people do actually prefer to use the interfaces that are specially designed for note taker use and that look like the traditional note taker environment. Right. Thank you, Jenny. Thomas? Other questions? All right. Um, if anybody else has any questions, please feel free to either raise your hand or type them into the Q&A session. We'll if you're doing there. Zoom and you want to raise your hand on a PC, Alt-Y. All right. We got somebody that says, thank you so much. Always learn so much from these webinars. Thank you for the positive feedback. And anybody else? 
type into the Q&A or raise your hand. Now I'll just say quickly, Thomas, while you're getting your next questions there, if there are any, as Earl mentioned, a lot of you are using PCs or maybe even some people may be using smartphones. If you do want to see Zoom and all it can do on a Polaris, um, Earl is going to be presenting that on Friday and you do not want to miss it. Um, everything that I've done today, I have strictly done using my Polaris as I'm doing right now. And uh, so all of you who can, if you're not registered, join us for Friday's webinar. And to add to that, if you have any requests for specific webinars, please, <laughs> please uh, go ahead and shoot us an email and we will, uh, we will take those into, uh, into account and try to get those done. Okay, I gotta know what just made you laugh, Thomas. Yeah. You don't, you don't wanna know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I think I might. <laughs> uh, is there a webinar about OK Google? Um, I don't believe there's going to be a webinar about this, um, simply because it's such a short, straightforward uh, thing. Is that does that sound about right to you guys? I think the, um, maybe the question would be. It. Yeah, I mean, I think the more the more the the question could be rephrased as: Is there going to be a webinar on how to set up the OK Google? Um, oh, not even that. I think that we could generally do one on voice assistants and yes, um, sort of all apps. Yeah. yeah. Um, so various things. So yeah, we could do that. All right. I'm going to write that one down. Actually, I think that's a good idea. We always forget about this. And it's one of Polaris's secret powers that we sort of forget to, and I use it all the time, but I, I just kind of forget to promote it and yeah. All right. So we've got another, uh, here we go. Uh, Rhonda, you should be able to unmute yourself. Go ahead and ask your, ask away. Okay. Hello. Can you, you hear? Yep. Okay. How do I sort my um, email messages so that the most recent shows up top and not at the bottom? <laughs> I'm only chuckling because um, you can't. Mm. That is a hotly requested feature, though, Jenny, Miss Jenny Axler. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know, and I never think about it because I always sort mine from the bottom. I don't like that. So, um, yeah, that's a very good idea and seems like something that could be easily done. So um, thank you for the suggestion, and we will try to get that. I, I would think that that wouldn't be too difficult. So yeah, I would think it'd be doable. And I like having all my most recent things up at the top. Oh, a lot of people do. I'm just weird. See, well, no, <laughs> I, I'm I'm with Jenny. I want mine at the bottom. So if we're going to change it, let's make it user specific change. Oh no, yeah, it will be. It would be I'm a setting. Jenny, I'm with Jenny. You're weird. Yes. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much, Earl. No, it's not that you all are weird. It's just that no, I keep messages that my most recent gets uh, mingled in with all the old ones. Ah, okay. Well, thank you, Rhonda. Well, they should be, um, they should sort by date regardless. So they shouldn't be mingled in with you. It's just that they're at the bottom instead of the top. Right. Other question there, Thomas? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we don't have any other questions at this point. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand or go ahead and type it into the uh, Q&A section. And if you think of questions after the fact, you know, feel free to give us a holler. Um, you can always reach out to our support staff at support at hymns-inc.com or give us a call at 512-837-2000 and uh, just follow the automated attendance for one for support and two for sales. All right. Well, unless there are any other final questions, uh, let's go ahead and call it. Thank you guys very much. Thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Thomas, yep. Jenny, thanks, Mike.